Daily Tech News Show is made possible by its listeners. Thanks to all of you, including Ali Sanjabi, Andrew Bradley, and Dale Mulcahy. Coming up on DTNS, Allison Sheridan talks about what it's like to ride in Waymo's car with no driver, why CNN Plus just shut down, and physics finally determines the optimal way to twist an Oreo. DTNS starts now. This is the Daily Tech News for Thursday, the 21st of April, 2022 in Los Angeles. I'm John Merritt. And from Studio Redwood, I'm Sarah Lane. And I'm Allison Sheridan of the Podfeet Podcast. I'm drawing the top tech stories from Cleveland. I'm Len Peralta. And I'm the show's producer, Roger Chang. And uh, you may have heard this theme uh, briefly played as an experiment. Well, it wasn't me messing up. I don't know why you would say that. Let's start with a few tech things you should know. <laughs> Instagram head Adam Masseri announced that the platform will change its ranking algorithm to promote original content in places like the Reels and the Feed tabs. Reposted content will be less likely to be recommended, as will accounts that primarily repost content. The algorithm will also stop resurfacing content already shared on the app for fewer repeats. Earlier this year, France's data protection agency CNIL, C-N-I-L uh, fined Google 150 million euros for using confusing language in those pervasive cookie Banners. So in response, Google has introduced new cookie banners for Europe that will offer a reject all button alongside accept all or more options choices. This will initially come to France and then extend across the European economic area, as well as the UK and Switzerland. These new banners will appear on Google search and YouTube for users not signed into an account. We previously reported on a Microsoft program that would help developers put ads within a game as in-game elements like billboards in a racing game. Well, Sony wants in on that action, too. Advertising Insider says Sony is considering a similar in-game ad program, as well as a program to reward players with in-game items for watching ads. Microsoft won't take a cut of its ads, but reportedly Sony has not decided on that just hmm. yet. Both companies will be selective about which advertisers are allowed in and will not allow collection of personal information. Xbox is expected to get the program in Q3 and Sony by the end of this year. An updated regulatory filing shows that Elon Musk has received commitments uh, either from his own finances or debt providers for $46.5 billion to finance a potential tender offer for Twitter. A tender offer would see Musk purchase some or all of the shares of the company directly from shareholders rather than through an offer negotiated with the Twitter's board. His opening offer was to the board. Uh, he has not committed to a tender offer yet, but he now has the finances uh, to follow through with it should he want to. The Twitter board has also not responded to that initial direct offer that was made back on April 14th. And interestingly, the stock is trading below Musk's offer amount, indicating that investors out there don't believe that his offer will be accepted. In other Elon Musk news, The Boring Company, or TBC, announced plans to significantly increase hiring across engineering, operations, and production to build and scale loop projects. TBC says its current Proofrock 2 machines can handle up to a mile per week, but that number could increase significantly with the next-gen Proofrock 3, which could supposedly mine at seven miles per day. That's quite a jump. TBC says it'll use its latest round of funding to build and scale loop projects, including Vegas Loop and others, although it didn't expand on what those other projects would be. Uh, just a quick shout out to James, who wrote in last week, noting that in our most recent flashback episode, we wondered when or if the boring company would actually complete a project. James points out that one already did happen last year in Las Vegas. Oh, it's the Vegas loop thing you're talking about. Yeah, that's that's yeah. at the LVCC, I think, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, thank you, James, uh, for pointing that out. Uh, thank you, Nth Mike and Stoic Squirrel, uh, for making me hungry by wondering if Elon Musk would proffer a chicken tender offer to Twitter. <laughs> uh, and now to our first story. If you haven't heard of CNN Plus, it's a paid subscription service for $5.99 a month, which delivers original news and discussion programs that you don't get on the cable version of the channel. They're hosted by big names like Anderson Cooper, Chris Wallace. It's kind of a Netflix for news specials, not not a live stream, just a bunch of programs you can choose from. Uh, and it launched on March 29th. And it's going away April 30th. 
Uh, just, just made it more than a month, barely. Uh, it got caught between two worlds. Uh, AT&T closed its sale of CNN's owner, Warner Media, to Discovery on April 8th. So now Discovery owns Warner Media and therefore owns CNN. CNN Plus was backed by Warner Media's former CEO, Jason Kalar, who left the company after the sale closed. And it was developed under CNN executive Jeff Zucker, who left the company before the sale. Andrew Morse, who's been running CNN Plus, is now going to leave the company. Uh, Alex McCallum is moving from GM of CNN Plus to oversee CNN's digital operations. She formerly ran product for CNN Worldwide. Now, one wonders where Chris Wallace, who left Fox to join CNN Plus, is going to end up in all this. Uh, but Thursday morning, incoming CNN chairman and chief executive Chris Licht told staff that the decision will let them, quote, Refocus resources on the core products that drive our singular focus, further enhancing CNN's journalism and its reputation as a global news leader. Uh, so Discovery's been banging the drum of making CNN more like the Wall Street Journal, Washington Post, etc., rather than more like Fox News and NBC, MSNBC. Uh, Licht told staff that some of the CNN Plus content will end up on other platforms. Uh, at a town hall meeting last week, uh, CEO David Zaslav told employees he'd rather have all the content under one platform rather than separate services for channels or types of content. So this is consistent with that. Get rid of a separate platform, CNN+. Mm -hmm. Plus bring the stuff under maybe HBO Max, something like that. Uh, Licht also said consumers want simplicity and an all-in service, which provides a better experience and more value than standalone offerings. Lots of hot takes out there about why CNN Plus failed. Uh, but leaving aside the knee-jerk political ones, uh, what, what do we think? Well, having gone through, uh, ha having been at a, a large company, not the size of CNN, but uh, you know, large companies that go through sales, I... I feel the pain of anybody who worked hard on CNN Plus only to see it shelved uh, or killed entirely uh, because, well, there's new people coming in and this is not really what they would their vision would have been anyway. And this this happens now. CNN Plus somewhat triumphantly launching and then deciding to shutter within a month is kind of embarrassing. It's easy to say, well, it's obviously a big failure. And maybe there's, you know, truth to the fact that there just weren't a lot of subscribers. People were confused, like, well, I already have CNN and there's headline news and now there's CNN Plus and what's that going to give me? Um, I was kind of one of those people. It wasn't something that I rushed out to to subscribe to and give any money to. And yeah, some of that stuff will end up in other places. But I, I, it seems like a, a combination of... Uh, People in executive roles having different visions for what the future is and a lot of people leaving at a very inopportune time for CNN+. Plus. So I'm, I'm sure all of these events are what caused this to actually disappear, but it was an unfortunate timing, too, that this came out right around the time we heard that CNN's numbers were way down, right? There was a, there was a, a big drop-off. I think CNN thrives when there's something huge happening so I would suspect that right now their numbers are going way up with the uh, invasion of Ukraine. But right when that launched, maybe things were just kind of cooling down and there wasn't any big, you know, everybody needs to know about this one thing topic. I don't know if that would be anything to do with it, but it might have caused it to it's slow down demise anyway. Well, and CNN Plus was not covering breaking news. It was like Chris Wallace sits down and interviews an interesting person. Anderson Cooper goes around and and, and talks to people on the street. Uh, here are old episodes of Anthony Bourdain. Uh, it, was, it was more like oh, okay. that and less of like what's happening right now. And I think two things are going on. One is Discovery has very clearly said, even before the merger closed, we'd like to bring everything together. You heard about Zaslav telling the employees just that. They've talked about taking Discovery Plus, which is like Home and Garden, Food TV, Discovery Network stuff, and merging it into HBO Max, into one super service. And I think that's what they want to do with CNN. The other thing to consider here is what you're talking about, Allison, which is people turn to news for events. And there are two different approaches right now. There's the Fox Nation approach, which is what CNN Plus was trying to emulate, although I don't think doing it very well. Fox Nation has more than a million subscribers at $5.99 a month, and it's very much the opinion-oriented stuff. The other approach is what ABC News Live, CBS News, and NBC News Now do, which is a free ad-supported here's the news. If you want to know about the war in Ukraine, here's the news approach. You can just watch it with ads. Uh, although NBC also adds it to Peacock, which I think is a little hint 
to what Warner might be wanting to do with CNN. Uh, make make a version of it that is just part of the super app where you can get the news. And maybe they'll do a free ad supported version of it in the CNN app, similar to what CBS News and ABC News Live and NBC News Now are. But they're definitely talking about treating CNN more as a hard journalism thing rather than what Fox and NBC, MSNBC are, which is more of an opinion oriented uh, news organization. And if, if you think about it like that, it, it makes perfect sense to me. I, I don't think you could have more clearly illustrated what Sarah was saying, which was maybe it was too confusing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, well, and, and it's confusing to try to explain the landscape very sl shortly, but if CNN is free with ads in the CNN app, that's not going to be confusing at all. People are like, oh, I can just watch it. Great. And if it's already in HBO Max or whatever they end up calling it, then that's going to be easy to understand as well. Uh, and, and CNN Plus was a lot harder, like you said, Sarah, to, to explain. Uh, well, hopefully this will be easy to explain or at least understand. Amazon has launched Buy with Prime, which lets third-party merchants offer Prime delivery as an option on their own website, separate from anything you might find on Amazon.com. These sites will be able to display Prime badges for items that are eligible for free two-day or next-day delivery, you know, Prime stuff, with Prime members able to use Amazon account information to place their orders. At launch, the service will be available by invitation for sellers already using fulfillment by Amazon. That lets merchants pay to have their inventory stored in Amazon's warehouses and to use Amazon's supply chain and shipping operations. Although the company says eventually this program will be extended to other merchants, including those not selling on Amazon at all. Pricing will vary depending on payment processing and fulfillment and storage and other fees that are specific to what the seller needs to use Amazon for. Amazon is already dabbling on this on a smaller scale. It handles orders for products sold on some other websites using a prog program called multi-channel fulfillment, which lets sellers store and also ship products using Amazon services. And you might recall Amazon used to offer a service where its drivers picked up packages from retailers and delivered them to consumers. But that program got paused at the beginning of the pandemic when Amazon got pretty slammed with online orders in general. Of note, Amazon has more than 2 million Prime customers. So if you like that Prime button and you like the idea of shopping outside of Amazon, you might be able to get some Amazon perks uh, by doing so. I wonder, there's, there's one obvious thing that this does for the other retailers is if you see you want to buy something and you see the Amazon Prime button, you're going, okay, I'm going to get free delivery. It's going to be fast. I know that's a reliable delivery service. It got a little wonky for a while there, and it seems to have picked up and gotten straightened out. And that that's great. But I also wonder how that's going to work with uh, knowing all of your purchases are in one place. Like One of the big compelling things to me is when I buy it on Amazon, I don't have to wonder where did I buy it to go back and find my receipt. I don't even bother storing my receipts or looking for them because I know they're going to be in the Amazon app. And I wonder whether you'll get that too. Would that, that be an added benefit? Well, I mean, you will be logging into, you know, using your, your Amazon login and your information on right. the third-party site. So one would think either that would be something that Amazon can add into your order history in, in you know, your, your own Amazon yeah. stats if you were on Amazon.com. Or that could be something that the third party seller would offer, but oh, yeah. you know they no, would have no, the no, data. No, 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 they 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 get in huge trouble if they start taking over that customer relationship. Uh, and even though it would be good, I, I feel I feel like a Amazon doesn't want that fight anymore. There's so many fights anytime Amazon takes data from a company and stores it. That I mean, they might they might do it. The merchants might want them to do it. I don't know. But I get the sense that the merchants are going to be like, no, the receipt, the email addresses, everything stays with us. Uh, you're just providing the logistics fulfillment, uh, yeah, which is consistent right, with this sort of being the AWS of shipping for Amazon, which is we'll provide the 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 storage and the shipping, but all the customer relationship, that's that's you. You've crushed my dreams. I'm sorry. Tom. I was really <laughs> excited about that. <laughs> I just think about every time Amazon tries to do something like that that makes things more convenient, the personal privacy aspect of it and the customer relationship a aspect of it with merchants just just crushes it. You know, I've I've gotten really good at hating companies for the way they treat 
customers and and their suppliers and things, but I've just not been able to get to the point of hating Amazon. I just still love it and I want everything in Amazon. It just makes me really happy to have it there. I mean, I I I agree and disagree with you, Allison. I I think that I am always relieved when I have to make a purchase through Amazon because it's easy. You know, mm-hmm. I can get it next day. But, uh, not all the time, but often I can. Um, I'm a Prime customer. I've been using Prime for years. Many people are as well. And that said, it bothers me when I use Amazon exclusively for for buying too many things. It just does. Yeah. I like the idea of spreading the wealth a little bit. And I don't keep up on who's a third party seller with relationships to Amazon enough to really understand, you know. Wh- what that company likes and does not like about being an Amazon partner. So, but the idea of having my prime benefits associated with an independent company, that's great. It's great for me. It's like a win-win for, for the customer. Yeah. And it's got to help I, those I've, third-party suppliers a I've lot. Had, uh, I've had problems with Amazon starting to not be as good as it used to be uh, for things I look for and not having the best price and getting lazy about like, eh, you'll just pay it because you're here. So I have <laughs> actively tried to diversify. Uh, bought a new thermostat this week on Home Depot. Uh, it was the same price on Amazon as it was on Home Depot, but I was like, you know what? Let's let's just you know spread the love around. I know it's still a big corporate company, uh, but but let me keep trying different things. I don't want to have all my eggs in one basket. That said, as a consumer, kind of love two day one day delivery being available from a merchant that I trust. That's not Amazon, even if it's Amazon providing that logistics. I'm with you, Allison. You know, I am going to admit I do the same thing you guys are doing, but it's more of a spread the wealth, not a not a hatred of Amazon. But I buy a lot of electronic stuff through Best Buy, and on, and you guys talked to, uh, yesterday or the day before about yeah. the increase in number of people going into stores. Mm-hmm. I will buy it from Best Buy because I can drive over there and go be around humans and pick it up, even yeah. though I just go in and. But I just like to go look at the stuff now. You get it faster a lot of the times if you can pick it yeah. up that way. Yeah, Dep- you know, depending on the situation. Uh, real quickly, Dave Clark, uh, Amazon. CEO of Worldwide Consumer told CNBC last year that he thinks Amazon is on track to become the nation's largest delivery service by early Mm -hmm. 2022. So again, Amazon Logistics becoming its own business uh, and becoming one of the biggest businesses of its kind uh, in the United States anyway. Hey, what do you want to hear us talk about on the show? Uh, One way to let us know is our subreddit. Uh, We look at it every day to see what y'all are interested in, what you're voting on, what your comments are. You can submit stories and vote on them at dailytechnewsshow.reddit.com. Well, while in Phoenix last week, Allison and Steve met up with DTNS Patreon supporter and host of the Kilowatt podcast, Bodie Grimm. They took a ride in a Waymo driverless taxi to do some shopping, see how it works. And boy, Allison, do you have some insights on how it does work. (laughs) Yeah, I want to preface this by my honest assessment I've talked about on the show before of Tesla's uh, full self-driving. It is categorically horrible. It is a terrifying experience. It's anxiety-filled. It makes tons and tons of mistakes. And you're a Tesla fan. You're a Tesla owner and a Tesla Tesla. fan. You hate it. Yeah. Right. But I want you to know that's how I feel about full self-driving on Tesla because the experience with the Waymo was just a thousand percent different. I could, mm. well, people hate it when you say that. It was a hundred percent different. It was all different. <laughs> it was all the difference that's possible. Uh, so, so let's start from the beginning. How, how did you get the cab? Well, so Bodie lives in an area uh, in, in Tempe, Arizona, where they actually have uh, the service. And remember, Waymo is basically an experimental proof of concept kind of thing going on here. It's not uh, it's prevalent and it goes everywhere. You you have this very defined region you can go into. So Bodie brought up the Waymo app on his phone and it was just like ordering an Uber, except he described it as uh, as driver roulette is sometimes when you get the car, it when it orders you a car, it'll tell you, oh, sorry, it's got a driver in it. <laughs> but so you just cancel the drive and do it again. And so um, I, I sent you guys a screenshot of confetti coming down where it said, congratulations, you get to ride without a driver, which is what we wanted to see. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it, well, it's exactly what we wanted to do. And Bodhi does this kind of like a party trick when people come to visit because he has it drive to Trader Joe's. 
And he does it. It's a mile away. And so it's a real nice experiment because it goes down uh, local, you know, neighborhood streets and it goes out into a lot of traffic. And to get into Trader Joe's, you have to make a left turn across oh, you mean, traffic. You mean after you get on board, you tell it to go to Trader Joe's. You're not going to Trader Joe's to pick it up. I see. Oh, correct. Right. Correct. Okay, yeah. You do it in the app just like you would do it with a uh, with a, an Uber. You tell it where you want to go. But, but I guess I kind of jumped ahead. Yeah. When, how, how did, how's the pickup uh, like like? Does it unlock its own doors? Does does it know where to stop? Like, I yeah. think that I'm curious does, about does all that. Does it come up and tires screech? Like, yeah. <laughs> is it playing the, the radio first... really loud until you get in? And it's like, yeah. hey, sorry. Yeah. So the uh, when Bodhi when Bodhi got the thing that said it was gonna uh, it was gonna come, it has a couple of things for you. On the front, it's got a an, uh, probably LCD panel that has the initials of the person who requested it. So if there's a whole bunch of these coming uh, to pick up people from bars, mm -hmm. you would know that it was his. So it said BG on the front. The second thing is it said, make sure you have Bluetooth on because when you walk up to the car, that unlocks the car. Ah, gotcha. So it okay. automatically unlocks and lets you in. Now, a lot of people ask what vehicle it is that, that we got. It, it was a simple a Chrysler minivan, uh, the Pacifica hybrid. Yeah, but that, that was is, one of the first test fleets. So that's probably a, probably what they've had there for a while. Yeah, and and it's it's really irrelevant what kind of vehicle it is. That doesn't have anything to do with this because this is a highly modified car. It has uh, lidar sensors on the front and uh, uh, the two front corners, and then in the center of the back. And then it's got this big dome thing on top. It looks kind of like Darth Vader's helmet is is the way uh, Bodhi described it. And so this has, from what I've been reading, it has three hundred thousand dollars worth of sensors on it. So it isn't really fair to compare the self-driving <laughs> in a $75,000 Tesla sure. to a $300,000 modification of another vehicle. Okay. So once, once you get in, you've Bluetoothed your way in, what, what's the experience like, you know, what, do you have to close the door? Does it close the door itself? Does it talk to you? What happens? <laughs> We did close the door ourselves. It said to buckle up and it said, you'll notice there's no driver in this car. And then it pulled away from the curb. And I have to tell you guys, it was spectacular. It was smooth. It was, uh, I mean, it stopped for the appropriate amount of time. When it turned into traffic, it turned gracefully. It never went in front of somebody we thought it shouldn't have. It didn't make any unsafe turns. But it was also not overly cautious. The, the Tesla, for example, when it goes to make a right turn into traffic, even if it's like a residential street and there's nobody around, it does it the way a new driver would do it. Like, er, 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 you know, it, mm -hmm. it's real slow. So I have to disengage it all the time because the people behind me are going to kill me. Yeah, right. You know, it's like in L.A., you can't you can't not drive right. You're going to get run over within <laughs> a split second. So uh, it was a really, really mellow experience. Our first reaction, of course, was, oh, my God no driver look the steering wheel's moving and steve was obsessed with watching the accelerator and brake being being applied because you could actually see it moving uh but after a few minutes we just started talking to each other we uh -huh. stopped freaking just, out it was that smooth just in the car what about just kind of general convenience uh and you know climate stuff you got the you got the you know bluetooth that lets you get in the car once you're in the car and you're buckled up what if you want to roll down the windows? Do you have the opportunity to do that? What if it's too hot in the car? Can you fuss around with the AC? I would just, well, probably not. It, you know, whatever you could do in the back of a Chrysler minivan is probably what you could do. There wasn't there wasn't anything about that. Uh, we didn't try to open the windows. It was perfectly comfortable in there. Mm -hmm. I, I did want to tell you two other things, though. When it, uh, when it dropped us off, Oh, I, I forgot to explain. It didn't get to Trader Joe's gracefully. It took, went, us, uh, went about three or four miles out of its way because it kept making passings and going, oh, no, I don't feel good about that turn. And it would go and it would make a bunch of right turns rather than mm. making a left turn. And it, mm -hmm. it passed the place three be times. Honest, before I did that the other day myself, so I'm not going to blame it. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was a fixed fee, so we didn't mind that. But then when it dropped us off, um, it dropped us off uh, like in a parking lot near Trader Joe's. But then after we got mm. out of the car, it pulled away from the curb and it turned 90 degrees and went right in front of Trader Joe's. And there was a woman about to step out into, into the crosswalk coming out of Trader Joe's. And she sort of leaned forward and then saw the vehicle coming. And I don't know whether she noticed there was no driver, but she stopped like any mm -hmm. person who has lived a certain length of time realizes you don't step out into traffic yeah, right. the cars coming. The, the, the Waymo stopped even though she had never stepped into the driveway. That's good. Or into the crosswalk. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's like overly cautious. Not, 
Yeah, but it was the right thing to do. It had, it had noticed her intent, like her lean forward and then lean back, which we thought was really impressive. And then it absolutely would not go until she went and she, you know, sort of scampered across the <laughs> crosswalk to get like away from it. Like it was waiting to pounce. Yeah. Yeah, uh, would, but go there, ahead. Was, there was one more thing I wanted to say. We got a, um, we ordered another one on our way back and it was fascinating. It was a very different driving experience. It was more aggressive than the first one. Huh. It wasn't bad, but it got up to speed faster. It made turns faster. And we started thinking, maybe there's little people back at Waymo headquarters with little steering wheels and accelerators, and they're actually remote controlling Maybe they have personalities, like the different <laughs> the different cars, you know? They've got their own onboard learning going on. That's fascinating. Yeah, well, we got a moody one today. <laughs> Doesn't want to turn left. But he came up with a better explanation. The, the vehicle we were in had a big rainbow logo on the side, and that's the newer ones. Ah. And he's wondering whether, and that was the first one, whether maybe the algorithm has been is applied different. to the newer vehicles. That makes sense. So it is a different personality, but not per car, just per platform. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Would you do it but again? It was, absolutely, absolutely. I would, uh, but I'm I'm nuts. I mean, I thought buying a car with full self-driving well before it was developed and paying for it ahead of time was smart. So, you know. I, I have an excessively uh, <laughs> high uh, belief that technology will save the world. I'm jealous. I wish I, I wish I I, I got to get I got to get over there and visit people. I got lots Bodhi. of people to visit, including Bodie. Yeah. So maybe. Oh, I'll, yeah. Maybe I'll do that. It's a good time. Well, thanks for your on the ground report, Allison. Uh, oh. Very enlightening. Uh, and Our pleasure. It was so fun. Yeah. Uh, if you've taken a driverless vehicle, do let us know about your experience. Feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. All right. It's not every day that we talk about Oreo cookies here on DTNS, but today is that day. MIT researcher Crystal Owens and three of her co-authors have an article titled On Oreology, the Fracture and Flow of Milk's Favorite Cookie. That's the name of it. In the current issue of the journal physics of fluids this week. Yes, oreology refers to the Oreo cookie and also how best to split the cream perfectly on both sides if you were to twist one open. Many people complain, you know, you twist it open, the cream's all on one side. And then you got this, you know, mm -hmm. crappy outside uh, cookie uh, that's all dry on the other side. What's a person to do? The team created an oreometer. That's what it's called. It's a 3D printed device using rubber bands and coins to achieve the weight, the proper weight that can translate into the force needed to mechanically twist the two parts of the cookie apart as perfectly as possible anyway. The device is actually a, top, a type of rheometer. That's something that's already used in labs to measure things like the way substances flow in response to applied force, how textures of food respond to failure stresses and strains. So this is all based on food science and uh, and there's got to be somebody out there who says, I would like this device for my home because I want my Oreo cookie to be perfectly <laughs> to be the perfectly same twisted. on both sides once opened. Two things. One, I'm sure this started as a pun. Somebody was calling the rheometer an oreometer, and then someone else decided to make the experiment. And second, this is meant to be used to teach fluid dynamics. So it's not just silly. Although it's also silly, it also would be a great way to help people learn fluid dynamics. And I think it's worthwhile in that respect. Tom, don't mock this. This is important science fit, science research. We need this kind of work done by our universities. Indeed. Now I'm going to do a Hydrox next just to see, you know, because that's how science works. The only problem that I have with the story is that I think twisting open an Oreo cookie is weird. You should eat it <gasps> as nature intended oh, Eric as, a, co called you as out. a cookie dipped in milk. At the period. end of that scene, that article, he calls you, you out. By, yeah. And you know what? Name, but... And I didn't, yeah, I, I read that. I read that little dig at the end of the article saying, if you're one of the weird people who eats an Oreo cookie without twisting it open, screw you. I'm paraphrasing. Sarah, what, he didn't say screw you. If you yeah. take, if you yeah. take uh, string cheese, do you not peel it? Do you just no, eat it no, like a I stick? feel it? I'm not a monster, Allison. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not worried about. to do that with string cheese, though. It is very fun. freeing. Like, no, this, it makes it taste weird. It. weird. Yeah, it if, does you, taste weird. If you don't free yourself, if you don't string your string cheese, it will taste weird. Mark my <laughs> you have word. Nothing to lose but your string chains <laughs> and your pride. <laughs> uh, well. Uh, that's going to do it for us today. Let's see what Len Peralta has been illustrating. Is it string cheese, Len? 
It is not string cheese, although now I wish I would have done an Oreo drawing. But, of course, the big story of the week is CNN Plus going away after only a month. And uh, this image is called Minus CNN Plus. And it was just really a kind of a way to draw Anderson Cooper as a Night of the Living Dead zombie. (laughs) That's worth it. (laughs) I mean, he's going to be fine. He's going to be fine, but it is sort of, you know, but I just thought this was kind of funny. It's uh, Warner Brothers uh, plus Discovery plus equals minus CNN plus. This uh, this image was actually drawn, was uh, named by BioCow uh, during the Twitch stream today. So thank you so much, BioCow. Uh, this image is available right now at my Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Len. Or if you like the traditional route, you can go to my online store at lenperaltastore.com and order it. Which, by the way, if you're a fan of the show Severance, I am selling what's called the Severance Package, which is 13 yeah. original prints nice. uh, of uh, drawn from uh, inspired by the hit show. So check it out. It's right on the front page. It's called the Severance Package. You have to agree not to disparage Len, though, to get the Severance Package. <laughs> That's exactly. right. Yeah. Yeah. You signed a non-compete. Remember? Um, I'm also- going to LenPeralta.com right now. <laughs> well, you. thank you as always, Len. Also, thank you to Alice and Sheridan, not only for letting us know what riding in a driverless car feels like, but just being an awesome person in general. You're a busy person, speaking of, Allison. So where should people keep up with your work? Well, the best place is podfeed.com. And you probably enjoyed hearing Erin Carson on DTNS a week or two ago where she was talking about earworms and TikTok. I didn't get enough in that discussion. It was too short. So I asked her to come on Chit Chat Across the Pond with me. And there'll be a link in the show notes, of course, uh, to that interview. And it was just an absolute blast getting her to expand on the topic. And and we kind of went off the roll, the rails talking about music in Nashville and had a really good time. Just talking to her was just a complete delight. Very cool. Uh, special thanks to Bruce Elliott. Bruce Elliott is one of our top lifetime supporters for DTNS. And we see you, Bruce. And we raise you a pint. Bruce, thanks for sticking with us, Bruce. With our Oreo cookies. Yes, thanks, Bruce. Bruce. There's a longer version of the show. It's called Good Day Internet. You might have heard of it, but if you'd like to learn more, go to patreon.com slash DTNS. It rolls right after this here show. This here show, by the way, is live Monday through Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern, 20 hundred UTC. Find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. We're back tomorrow with Shannon Morse joining us. Talk to you then. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. (laughs) 